with us Grandmaster Sandeepan Chanda who's on three and a half out of four. Uh, Sandeepan, today was a very quick game time-wise, although moves, a lot of moves were played. Uh, but with Ratnakaran, we can expect that. How was the game? It was a very interesting game. Uh, basically, we followed uh, my game against Grandmaster Bogdanovich from uh, China uh, last December. And uh, he went for this. I was a little bit surprised and I thought, okay, perhaps he found some improvement. What he did uh, was interesting but also very risky for Black. And uh, we were checking some variations afterwards. It seems that why it is better. Mm -hmm. But uh, the lines are pretty amazing. And uh, I think I uh, did find uh, some good moves at uh, important uh, points. So all in all, it was a complicated game, but I'm uh, happy uh, with the play. These amazing lines, could you share of one or two of them? I think the fireworks begin after it took on C3, right? Uh, or before yes. that as well? Uh, taking on C3, like as you say, it was a very important uh, point. But uh, some lines like uh, after I played, uh, after he took Knight C3, or let us start for a bit, uh, from a bit before, like uh, when he played Queen E5 and I took bishop into c8, rook c8 and bishop d2. So while playing queen e5, he missed this uh, nice point that uh, after knight e4, bishop c3, knight c3, I have rook e1, rook mm -hmm. a e1 intermezzo and then it is strong. This is what happened in the game. So this right. was first of all the nice point. Then he has queen f5. And after queen f5, I thought for some 20 minutes, uh, something like that. Because the most obvious, queen into c3 uh, is possible. He has to go rook f6. Queen f6 is not possible because rook e6, queen c3, rook a6 is made. Yes. So rook f6, rook e6, rook c f8. And this white must be better. But I was not sure how much. And also my opponent felt uh, that he would have some practical chances here. Mm -hmm. But instead of queen into c3, I realized that rook e6 is a very important alternative as well. And uh, yeah, it's a mate in one with rook. I mean, rook into h6, he will have to give up this queen. Yeah, yeah. So, rook e6 now he has to stop this rook e6, but there are a few ways. Like in the game, uh, first of all, what he did is rook f6. Mm -hmm. And my initial thought was that after rook f6, I have queen g2, he has to play queen g5. Yes, again, this was the game. And now I took queen g5, rook f6, and uh, winning the exchange. But at first, it was not so clear if white how much white is better and all. But I I had a feeling that after queen g2, queen g5, I have queen h3 and it's winning. But then he has an amazing defense, knight d1. Mm -hmm. And of course, he, he was hoping for this. And uh, luckily, on time, I, I spotted this. Uh, in fact, I think before playing queen g2, I saw it, or after before rook e6, I don't remember exactly now. But this was a, an amazing point. Because uh, knight e4 also can happen, but then you have rook e4. Yes, so yes, uh, knight e4 is the same idea. Knight yeah. e4 is also, I think, possible, but knight e1 is even better. That's right. But uh, in the game, what happened is I took queen g5 and rook into f6. And uh, this, uh, what uh, happened in the game, if you just go through the game, the finishing is very nice to see. Right? C5 uh, move, yeah? Yes, from c5. I think if I don't get c5, it might get complicated. Mm -hmm. But c5 and uh, I don't have all this, uh, like he doesn't have these perpetuals and I'm just in time to promote the queen. And apart from uh, apart from this, like after rook e6, there's also one move king e7. So I have to get rook e7, rook f7, rook into f7, queen into f7, now queen d3 check. King h8, queen into c3, king a7, queen d3, king h8, queen d4, king a7, queen e4, king h8, mm -hmm. now rook g6. Now I am threatening rook into h6, king g8, queen g2, and rook h8. So I thought the only move is rook e8. Because here, if you place cd5, attacking uh, the queen, but I still have rook into h6. Uh, yeah, king g7, because king g8, I have queen g2, same. King g7. Queen a7, rook a7, king g8 doesn't work. Or, yeah, it doesn't work. So, queen a7, king f8, queen h8 check. If king e7, c8 is hanging, queen g8, queen f6, and rook h8 is coming. So, I thought rook e8 is only move, rook into h6, and now he has again two moves. King g8 or king g7 is also possible. If king g7, 
Rook e7 would be mistake because again king g8. But I have queen e7, king f8, queen f7, king f7. And here I thought I can just take rook into h4. And this rook endgame is very good winning chances. Because he doesn't have f3, I am rook f4 check now. And if he goes, he starts with rook e4, then I go rook e7, rook into b7. Collect b7, if he goes f3, I play h3, one move. And okay, I, I'm at the moment I think I'm a couple of pawns up and I have chances. So instead of king g7, he goes king g8. And now I blundered something when when I was calculating from uh, while playing rook e6. I thought that after king g8, I have queen g2, king f8, rook h8, king e7, queen e4 check. I take twice on e8 and I am winning in this king pawn in game. Mm -hmm. But only while analyzing with Ratnakar and Sarvan, we realized that after queen g2, there is queen g7 because rook g6 there is rook e1. Ah. But after king g8, I think we, I can play rook e6. He has to take rook e2 e6, pawn e2 e6. He has to play probably queen e7. And this queen in game is just clearly better for white. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so these are the lines. Yeah, these were some wonderful calculations. And we, we all know that Ratnakaran is a very tricky player. He, ha he has many traps up, up his sleeve. Yeah, like this knight d1. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. So, when you're playing a player like this, what are the special precautions you take? Uh, or is it like just every player is the same for you? Well, when you know someone like very well, maybe something happens in uh, subconscious that you get more alert but i'm not sure if it's possible really to be more uh, more like alert in certain positions because tactics can come when you are least expecting it but yeah i mean uh, in your subconscious perhaps you get more alert uh, against players whom you consider right. more dangerous and one question we wanted to ask you is that when whenever we have seen you analyzing it's like uh, your way of analyzing is very, very systematic. You have these moves uh, listed down. You kind of go deep into the lines. Uh, how, how did you develop this uh, calculating ability and how can players, you know, who want to improve uh, do that? I think not everyone will agree with your assessment. <laughs> so, so I, I Even now when you are telling the variations, they were like, okay, the white black has two possibilities here. Then you looked at it quite in depth, both the possibilities. So it was very systematic. Well, in this particular case, it is such so concrete position that you have to, like it is not that, uh, it's not always that you can just leave uh, depending on your understanding that it is better. But, uh, like knight d1, it is like you have to, sure. have to see them. I'm not sure I'm particularly good at it, but uh, yeah, I guess uh, normally mm, there are several good books where you can, with which you can work on and um, these things uh, should help, I mm -hmm. guess. I think in future we could expect a book by you uh, explaining this thing. Maybe, <laughs> we'll see. Okay, uh, good luck Sandeepan, five more rounds to go and we wish you all the best. Thank you so much.